In this video, I will be going through the necessary steps to get started with the Raspberry Pi, install Wi-Fi and the camera board. The Raspberry Pi 2 comes in two flavors, the regular one and then the Noobs Edition. The difference between the two is that the Noobs Edition also contains a microSD card. In the box, you will find a quick start guide in 16 languages and the Raspberry Pi uh, in an anti-static bag. If you have the Noobs Edition, it will also contain an anti-static the Raspberry Pi 2 looks uh, very similar to the V+, except that it has a quad core and one gig of RAM. The microSD card included is a SanDisk 8GB uh, class 10 microSD card. Ok, let's get the Pi ready to boot. First, remove the microSD card from the SD adapter and insert it in the Raspberry Pi. You should hear a clicking sound insert the microSD card. Then take the power supply and connect it to the micro USB port. I'm using a 5 volt 2 amps uh, power supply which I had laying around. Then we'll need some input uh, peripherals. So let's take a keyboard and a mouse. I'm using two uh, separate devices but you could use a wireless dongle for a combo uh, keyboard mouse set or something similar. And finally, we'll need to hook up a display using the HDMI board. Once connected, plug in the power dial. This is the output of the Raspberry Pi 2 booting for the first time. Unlike the Noobs edition on the B+, it looks like the Raspbian was pre-installed. In the upper left corner you can see four raspberries, this indicates the quad core of the Raspberry Pi 2. Once booted, the Pi will automatically launch the configuration tool uh, during the first boot. You can use this menu to expand the file system, but this should already be covered when using Noobs. Next, I'll configure the Pi to boot straight to desktop. Uh, as the goal is to use it as a desktop computer. You can do this using menu 3 and then choose the desktop login as user 5. Finally, I'll configure the hostname of the Pi to be something different. For this, go to the advanced options, select hostname and type in the new name you would like to use for the Raspberry Pi. Once all changes have been applied, reboot the Raspberry Pi. This time, the Raspberry Pi will boot straight to desktop without running the configuration tool, without providing any menu options. You can later on change this behavior by running the Raspberry Config tool from within a terminal on the Raspberry Pi. Before connecting the Wi-Fi dongle, make sure the Pi is powered off. You can do this by using the menu and shut down the Raspberry Pi. Once the Pi is powered off, you can take your uh, Wi-Fi dongle and insert it in uh, one of the available USB ports. I'm using the Wi-Fi dongle from Element 14. It comes with a set of instructions on how to connect and configure the Wi-Fi. If you look at the instructions, you will see that they are very straightforward and easy to apply. The same instructions also apply to any other Wi-Fi dongle. Now take the Wi-Fi dongle, remove it uh, from the package and insert it in one of the available USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. Once this is done, power on the Pi and wait for it to boot. Once the Pi has booted, we can configure the Wi-Fi. Do this by going to the Preferences menu and clicking the Wi-Fi configuration tool. 
in the pop-up, press the scan button to detect new wireless networks and double click the one you would like to connect to. Enter the password of the wireless network and click add. If all went well, you should now see an IP address has been assigned to your uh, Raspberry Pi and you should be able to browse the internet. You can use a pre-installed browser to test the connection to the Epiphany browser. You can type in a URL to confirm that your IO address has been connected. If this is the case, we can now move on to update the Pi by downloading the updates from the internet. Upgrading the Pi is done in two steps. The first step is to use the apt get update command in order to update the package lists of uh, the repositories used by the Raspberry Pi. This will ensure that the Pi knows uh, which new versions are available to the different applications. This takes some time to update, but once done, we can move on to the next command. The next command is the apt-get upgrade. This will ensure that based on the new patch list, the new software can be applied for the already installed applications. I've accelerated the process for the sake of the video, but in reality it took about 13 minutes to perform the upgrade. When the upgrade is finished, reboot the Pi by entering the reboot command in the terminal to apply the updates. Finally, let's install the Pi camera. The box is rather big, but that's to ensure the camera is well protected between uh, two pieces of foam. In the box you will find the Pi camera module in an anti-static bag. Remove it from the bag and put it aside. You will also find a set of instructions which clearly detail how to install the camera uh, to the Raspberry Pi. Have a read. To understand how it works and then proceed. Start by opening the CSI port on the Raspberry Pi and take your camera and peel off the little blue film. I had some trouble removing it but there is a little lip to help you remove it. Take the flex cable and connect it to the Pi by putting the exposed contacts away from the Ethernet port. Once the cable is inserted, close the CSI port and power on the Pi. Once the Raspberry Pi has booted, open the terminal and launch the Raspi config tool. Using menu 5, enable camera support and reboot the Pi. Camera connected and enabled, it should now be possible to take pictures using the Raspi still command. We see that the picture here is upside down, but this can be solved by adding some parameters to the Raspi still command, like horizontal flip and vertical flip. The picture is previewed for 5 seconds before it is saved to the destination file as specified in the command. If you take a file browser, you see that the test file is there and you can open it and visualize the content. That's it, the Pi camera is now fully functioning.